<laughs> All right, guys, welcome to Vision Day 4. I am very excited to uh, bring to the stage our final speaker for today. And uh, she's an individual I've known of for quite some time. Uh, her and her husband have had quite the social media presence and quite the impact uh, with a number of brands that you're probably familiar with, uh, one being Hit Burn. And uh, she puts out amazing social media content and she has an incredible story and she's been sharing her story for some time now and uh, just helping a woman really get their relationship with food and exercise and their bodies in order. So our speaker here is known as a media personality, keynote speaker, fitness host. She's worked with celebrities, professional athletes, Olympic athletes, CEOs, and people from all types of backgrounds and fitness levels. I know she's very excited to connect with each and every one of you today. And her work's been featured in all of the big publications, Shape, Women's Health, Strong Fitness Magazine, The Every Girl, Fox, and MSN. The reason that I wanted to um, have Kelsey Heen and come and speak to you all today was because she has figured out something that I believe is the future of the industry, which is connection. And connection is the number one currency and we build connection through community. So I'm not going to say too much more. Uh, she's going to help you uh, figure out how to build your own thriving community. And uh, I'm super excited to have Kelsey Heen. And Kelsey, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, everyone. So great to see you. Yes, we are excited to have you here today. And uh, uh, Kelsey, I thought it'd be awesome to just uh, maybe share a bit of your story. I know you uh, you know, have quite the transformation of your own uh, that brought you into fitness. Maybe uh, for those who don't know who you are, tell us a bit about who you are and uh, you know how you got into this world of being a fitness coach. Absolutely. So like you said, my name is Kelsey Heenan and my husband, Dennis, and I run a company called Hitburn. So like high intensity interval training, and we have an app and we do four fitness challenges a year with our community. And it's, it's a ton of fun. We started, uh, way back in the day of email marketing. And that's how we, we started with email affiliate marketing. And then as social media started to become more popular, we got into Instagram, Facebook, all of those things, and have started to grow our business that way. We started very, very small with PDFs and uh, just linking out to, to videos. And over time we've organically grown. And then we started moving into paid advertising and all of those things. But when we, before we even got started in the fitness industry, Dennis and I met in college, we were both collegiate athletes. We played basketball at uh, the school that we went to. And so that's how we met. We became fast friends and it was athletics have been a huge piece of our lives forever. Um, but when I was in college, I actually developed anorexia. I got really, really sick, um, during college. And this was a time of life that was really challenging because I knew movement and strength was really important, but it just became something that was so overwhelming to me. And I got really, really sick and had to go into treatment. Uh, Dennis was a huge piece of my recovery. We were engaged at the time. We were really young and we got married. Uh, when I was 21 and he was 22, but when we were engaged, I was in treat in treatment. And through that process, uh, I, I went through that. We went through that together. And after treatment, I continued therapy, being able to just work through all of these things. And after a couple of years of recovery, I realized, okay, movement is important. Health is important. Nutrition is, is important, but there's so much stuff out there that is so all or nothing that is so stressful. All these people have lives that they need to live and they can't be living in the gym. And it becomes this thing where just mentally people struggle so much because they want to accomplish these goals, but they don't uh, have a lot of balance and a good relationship with food. So uh, Dennis started, he was the OG trainer of the family and uh, he was personal training and decided he wanted to start learning things about online. So while I was uh, getting all my certifications and starting my coaching and all this kind of stuff and working another job, he was like, I'm going to quit working at LA fitness and learn how to do this online thing. And so he took a year uh, and he learned how to build websites. He learned how to do email marketing and all this kind of stuff. And we made it a goal for me to join him a year later. And in May of 2014, I, I quit doing all of my in-person stuff uh, that was uh, and my other job and all those things. And I, I joined him and we were not making very much money at the time. We 
we're living on beef and rice and (laughs) that's basically it. But there's something that important happens when you go all in and you have a big vision and we wanted to make fitness accessible for people, have it be something that felt fun and not overwhelming and not something that was really going to make people feel bad about themselves. Cause a lot of times people are intimidated to go to the gyms. So we wanted to provide options that people could do at home to help them feel strong and empowered to get the results they want, where they're not being yelled at constantly. I, it probably from the five seconds that you've heard me talk, you would realize I'm not going to be the kind of person that's going to yell at you when I'm training. <laughs> I I'm an ultimate encourager. And so we started uh, when we started building our business together in 2014, we were both the face and we were both coaching and doing all of these things. And after a couple of years, Dennis realized I, I really like doing the marketing and back end stuff. And I was like, I love coaching and I love helping people. And so uh, he's not on camera as much anymore, but he still makes appearances every now and then. And I do most of the coaching now. So over time, it's really evolved into what it is now, where we we have our app, we have our four fitness challenges per year. We have a variety of different types of funnels that people come into our world through. Uh, but the most important thing is continuing to love the community that we have. Mm-hmm. If you take nothing away, if you have a, a smaller following or a bigger following, whatever it is, putting the time and care into the people that you have in your world is super, super important to be able to keep that community thriving. So that's, that's where we are now and just continuing to build and grow. I've, I've worked with a few other companies along the way, created workout programs with a couple of different celebrities, uh, which have been cool to, to get the word out in different ways to bring people into. A- that's a bit about me and my story. I'd love to come back to that in how to collaborate with other companies to get the word out and, and build the community. Um, to talk a bit about, uh, actually, I, I can ask you a, a different question here just to kick us off here. Give us a day in the life, Kelsey, from, from, from morning to night. Just what does a day in the life look like for you right now? I think that's a kind of a cool vision for people to kind of maybe aspire to for some here. Yeah. So my vast majority is online fitness, but I do have a few people in person. So just this morning, I, I go to this person's house three days a week. And so I, I go and train him at his house and then come back. I, we rent space at a studio that's just on the street from us in Los Angeles. And so I train a couple clients out of there too, but then we do all of our filming there. So a lot of what we do is project-based. So if we know we're going to have a challenge that's coming up, we'll really try to batch our content and the, the types of things that we do. So we'll, we'll do sprints. So we'll, we'll film a bunch of stuff, all of the things that we need for certain programs, if we're building a program, and then we'll have our kind of day-to-day work. So if I'm training a client, they'll either come to the studio or I'll go to their house and then we'll, we'll do the filming that we need to do, whether it's a big project, whether it's just social media content. And then the afternoons, I will be doing more of my interaction with my people. So I'll I'll usually check into my Facebook communities a, a couple times a day and we, we have our main hit burn community Facebook group, and that's where people live the majority of the time. And so I'm in there every single day, interacting with people, usually once in the morning and once in the afternoon. And I answer all their questions, make videos for them. And then when we have challenges, we do smaller breakout communities where it's only people in those challenges. And so then I hop back and forth between the two groups. And then I have a small group coaching program called Stronger Than Ever. And I have a, a few women that I work with. And then one guy named Thomas and we love Thomas. He is amazing, (laughs) but it's majority women. And so I do a live call with them every single week where we dive deeper. And so that's my highest level of online uh, interaction that I have with people. So it really is project-based. It depends on the the phase of what we're working on, but that's kind of a typical day. I got a lot of new questions now. I'll try and stay uh, in order here. So the power of your story, how, how much do you feel that plays in drawing people into the community? Do a lot of them have the same background as you or was that just kind of one piece? What's drawing people to you, Kelsey? So a variety of things. Yes, I think my story is really important and a clear differentiation I always make when people come into our world is I am not a medical professional. I don't treat eating disorders. What I do do is I help provide a safe space and use language that is supportive to people to improve their relationship with food. I give them mm. actual strategies to help them be able to feel more comfortable with food choice, to help them make mindful, nutritious decisions, and also be able to uh, 
be able to eat any food that they want. I have pizza night Friday every single week. Right. So we, I, I give them opportunities to create that ecosystem and that lifestyle for themselves. Um, I, I do think a lot of people come into our world because they, they are drawn to that kind of balance. We also provide a, a, specific niche for the types of workouts that we do. A lot of people that come into our world, they're working or they have kids where they're bringing them all the places. They have 30 minutes. They need to get it in, get it out and have it be effective. So we, we provide a very specific type of, of training for people where if they're, if they're wanting to do a, you know, super gnarly in-person CrossFit class, like that's not what we're going to provide. So we, we know who we're serving in what we're mm. providing. So that's a huge part of building the community, know who you're serving and to really stay true to that. Um, talk a bit about like what the interaction looks like. One thing that a lot of our coaches um, ha- have maybe experienced as a challenge is, well, we just have coined babysitting, uh, maybe, you know, adult daycare where, the expectation is almost that Kelsey is going to get you results. I don't know if you've run into this, but how do you set the expectation around themes like ownership, responsibility, and helping people, you know, shift from maybe that victim mindset to really taking full ownership of their results? How does that communication sound? What are some of the things that you say to build a community that like they again, they get to the point where they get it and they can now tell other people, Hey, we don't think like that around here. We think like this. Cause I know that's a big part of how our community is growing. I'd love to hear your experience. Yeah. So something that is a, a really interesting shift in mindset for people is when they realize that fitness is a part of who they are and it's not just something they're doing. So a lot of people come into our world through 30 day workout challenges because that's a, it's a great little hook, right? I can do that for 30 days. So it's a great way to bring people into our world, give them a time-based challenge, which makes it feel tangible and, and something that they can continue to, or something that they can accomplish. But we're like, this is just the start of your journey. You're, you're with us. This is your life. This is a part of who you are. And so when we come together every single day, I mean, we're all interacting every single day. You're going to have a day or a week or a month where you're going through tough stuff and that we're all there to support each other. And when they see, oh, Liz was going through something hard last week, but now she's back. She's doing great. Everyone's there to support her. We think about it in the long term versus uh, just, I need to be perfect right now. I have a few mantras that I say all the time. And one of them is progress, not perfection. And people Mm. bleed that mantra when they're in our community because they all feel it and experience it. And I share the things that I, I'm I'm not oversharing my life. I'm a generally private person, but I empathize with them and I share the things that will be helpful for them to be able to relate to people because they need to know that we're real people too. If if they feel like, oh, Kelsey's on a pedestal and everything is perfect in her life all the time, they're going to feel like they need to be that way too. Mm. So being able to relate and show that empathetic side is important and also have, it's important to be a leader and show that you have the skills to be able to lead groups through challenging things, but also we're all human beings, right? <laughs> we need to be able to show that too. I love that. I heard pastor Craig uh, Groeschel define transparency as people will admire you for your strengths, but they will connect with you on your weaknesses. Mm-hmm. I think uh, you just nailed that there. I would love for you to speak a bit more to vulnerability. It's, you know, a huge theme these days and it's how you create connection, right? It comes from communication, but it's oftentimes scary. I had um, a female client of mine, higher level client. And I said, the next level is for you to start being more vulnerable because a lot of her content uh, just projects everything is together. And she said, why would they hire me? if I'm expressing all these challenges that shouldn't I have this, don't they want to see that I figured this all out? Mm-hmm. I said, yeah, definitely to a degree. So I'd love to hear your take on, you know, how much do we share? When do we share? When, maybe some guidelines. It's different for everyone. It depends on your audience too. Um, I, I do think it's important for people to be real. And, and when it becomes a point where I, I think, you need to figure out where you are on the spectrum of what you're also 
willing to be vulnerable about. I don't think you have to be sharing all of your dirty secrets if that's something that isn't uh, something you want to be doing and something that isn't helping people feel seen and heard. One of the things I, I just like to read the room in a sense, which can be challenging to do, especially in an online setting. But I'm when I'm getting to know my people and see the themes that are going on, I'm reading through the the comments and the threads. I'm like, okay, we've had 10 people in a row talk about how they have looked in the mirror and they're struggling with what they're seeing today. So I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. we need to share. Here's, here's a time where this exact same thing happened to me, or here's a client story where they were going through this and here's what they did to get through it. So it doesn't always need to be a personal thing, but listen to what people are saying and be able to uh, empathize with that is, is super important. So I think it does depend. I have found power in vulnerability. I think it's really important. Hmm. Sometimes, sometimes, because we all go through stuff, right? If you're, if you're going through heartbreak or you're going through a really challenging thing, it's not like you have to immediately go and share a post of you crying. Maybe you could, but you don't have to. Right. But, and so maybe you need your own time. I think it's important to understand also what is going to be helpful for you in the process. Um, so it's kind of both and. That's really good. No, I appreciate that. Yeah. Empathy, being able to, you know, just, you know, sit in their shoes for a bit. I, I love what you said, read the room. If everybody's asking and you're like, geez, I just went through this, how there's your, this is your opportunity. Uh, so that's really, really good. I'd love to hear um, just some of the ingredients that have been a part of uh, your and Dennis's growth. It sounds like you guys have a, you know, different superpowers yeah. and, and just, to, you know, what does that relationship look like um, in terms of who owns what and you guys, how you've managed your romantic relationship in, you know, the process of building a business as well. Yeah. Dennis is the best. And if you come to Houston to the mastermind, you'll be able to see him and uh, hear the presentation, pick his brain about all the things he's, he's, incredibly gifted with marketing and dreaming and this is vision day right so seeing a vision for different opportunities i think curiosity is something that he has a lot of and i have a lot of that too so kind of just asking the question like what if like what if we tried this or what if we did this and um just allowing yourself to get a little curious has been really helpful so we we do have a lot of similarities but we do have different skill sets so he does a lot more of, like I was saying, the, the back end stuff. He loves, if there's a problem, he loves to be able to figure it out. And he's tinkered with all of the different softwares and all of the different things. And he, he dives deep into stuff. He's the kind of person where he all of a sudden got really deep into like Legos. And so all of a sudden he's building the Eiffel Tower, really? uh, 10,000 piece Eiffel Tower. So he loves to problem solve. So he's really that way. I love, I, I'm, um, uh, I love the coaching aspect, being able to connect with people, being able to like look into the camera or be in the room with somebody and help them feel like the next elevated version of themselves. I cry when I see transformation posts. Like I, I just, I love that stuff. I love being able to communicate with people and, and care for them in that way. So I do a lot of the coaching. I do a lot of the ad creative, um, we, we do some fun things and maybe we'll do this when we're in Houston. We, we have a couple of drills that we do for when we are in a kind of creative mode where we're creating ads or we're creating content. We have a few drills where we bounce ideas off of each other and he'll say a headline and then I'll have to come up with a 30 second kind of pitch or way to draw people in or a hook just in the moment. Mm. So it's kind of, we call it ad improv. And so we have these drills that we do together. And so it's a cool way to take our different skill sets and figure out how do we create something that's really cool, that's going to be effective for people. And then balancing the romantic side. You want to know that too? I think maybe somebody here might benefit from that. I don't know. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, so yes, we are married. We've been married for almost 13 years, which is super fun. And it's, it's, one of the things I think we have in our favor is our personality types complement each other very well. And we are both very easygoing in general and both listen well. So I think that's something that has really played in our favor where we have a mutual respect for each other and 
he has something important to say, I listen to him. I have something important to say, we listen to each other. Uh, so that that is a huge piece of it. We not saying it's perfect by any means. We learned really early on about our different working styles. For example, Dennis does a lot of copywriting. And he was he was writing an email like in the zone, and I'm trying to figure out some customer support question. This was in 2014. And so I'm like, so Dennis, like when this happens, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, Kels, I'm writing. I need to focus. I'm in a flow right now. Like you need to, you need to wait until I'm done writing. I'm like, oh, I get it. <laughs> and same thing for, for when I'm trying to focus, I'm trying to film something. I'm, I'm really focused. He knows that I need some space. And so it's taken some trial and error to understand that. But something else that has been really important in this kind of going back to that ad improv drill that we do, we don't take things personally and that takes practice because it feels personal at first. But when he's giving me feedback on a video saying, uh, you, you need more energy, that was super flat. He's not saying, Kelsey, you're terrible at doing ads. Nobody wants to hear what you're saying. No, he's saying, turn up the volume a bit, babe. Like <laughs> that's gonna help get people more engaged, right? So we, we have that understanding now where we have a good workflow, but trial and error along hmm. the way. Everyone has different styles and there's not a right or wrong. You just have to figure out what works for you. That's great. Thanks for sharing that. Um, Kelsey, talk about imposter syndrome. That's a real thing. A lot of people have that fraudulent complex. Don't feel like I can show up today. Maybe there's something personal going on in their life. Uh, maybe they, you know, didn't follow their own diet, their own advice, and just not showing up. I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves as coaches to, you know, be perfect, if you will, um, and to have everything together or what we say has no validity, no value. And while we should be intentionally doing our best, sometimes I think we can self-sabotage way too easily. What are some things that you've experienced? You know, how do you manage that? Yes. Here's the thing. Everyone goes through it. Everyone has experience. And if they haven't, I mean, good for them, but for, for the rest of us, <laughs> the vast majority of people have experienced this at one point or another. And I think for me, it comes back to realizing, and this has been from a lot of the really challenging things I've been through in my life with the eating disorder and going through therapy and all of those things. I'm sure a lot of you have heard this before, but we can't control the thoughts that pop into our head. So if we are able to filter through it and just be like, zoom out a little bit, be a bit more objective about the thoughts that pop into our head and say, okay, is this the truth about me? Or is this not the truth about me? Why could this possibly be something popping into my head and being able to filter out like the nonsense versus the truth. That's a skill that I've really developed. And, and this happens to me still to this day where it's like, oh, like, I, I don't feel like I'm doing enough. I feel like I'm you know, falling behind in a certain area. I don't feel like I'm as successful as I want to be. And then I'm like, okay, else let's come back to reality. You've done some really cool stuff. Think about how many people's lives you've changed. Think about all of the amazing things that you're doing right now in the, in the moment and will continue to do it. It's being able to be objective. And again, it just comes back to these, these mantras. Like I don't have to be perfect to be making progress, to be successful. Another thing that is also very important when it comes to imposter syndrome and just feeling good enough in general, we're, we're all entrepreneurs. We need to identify the type of business and the type of lifestyle that we actually want. Because what I want is different from what Vince wants, is what, different from what Aaron wants or what Shelby wants, right? Like we all have different types of lives that will bring us the most joy. Because I'll tell you the truth, more money does not automatically mean more happiness. Less body fat does not equal more happiness all the time, right? It, it's not to say that it can't bring a better quality of life because it certainly could, but it doesn't mean that what Vince has is what I want or what anyone else wants. So it's, especially if you're just starting or maybe you have a big business and you're like, oh shoot, I hate my life. I'm making more money than I ever did before, but I hate what I'm doing. I feel so stressed all the time because Dennis and I continually try to keep ourselves in check hmm. with, are we enjoying our day to day? Are we enjoying the long-term projects? Are we setting ourselves up for the lives that we want to have? A few years ago, we decided we, yes, we love what we do and we want to continue to grow and thrive, 
And also we want to enjoy our lives now because I love fitness and I love coaching. And also I have so many other things that I'm interested in. For example, this weekend, we just went to WonderCon, which is like a mini Comic-Con. If you look at my Instagram, <laughs> you'll see some of my I cosplay. I was Poison Ivy and I was Bane yesterday. Like just like random weird things where it's like, I like this stuff. So I'm going to do it. I love going to movies. Yeah. I love uh, going to musicals. Like I'm going to incorporate these things into my life while also growing my business. So if you feel like you're an imposter, you're, but you're always like working and not allowing yourself to grow in other ways, like, is it worth it? You need to think mm. about yourself as a whole person. And that can bring you joy in not just your business, but all other areas of life. I'm so glad you're saying this and you're hearing a lot more people speak up. I seem like there's a bit of a shift going on right now. I've seen a lot of speakers kind of speak out to building a better business, not a bigger business and, uh, you know, ideal life design. That's actually one of the talks that I'll be uh, doing with uh, my therapist, Annie in Houston, which is helping people reverse engineer actually how much money you want to draw need to draw to live your ideal life. Because I think a lot of us might already be there or super close and don't even know why we're working so hard anymore. And now it's creating new problems that have dear consequences. So yeah, maybe speak to a bit of that because you know, you've been around, you guys have been around for a while. So you've seen a lot of people rise and fall and you've seen, you know, it's tempting to like, wow, look at that. And maybe we should be positioning our company to sell too. And, and, or shoot, maybe we should have this new model built in, or we need to, how do you manage all the distractions, if you will? all the opportunities. And you know, there's more opportunities, the more you grow and more events you go to, it's enticing. How, how do you guys have that? How, what does it sound like to keep yourself in check? Well, so we've, we've gone through it. We've, we've been through ups and downs and backwards and upside down and all the things, right? So we've really landed on, uh, right now, what, what we want to focus on is the four challenges a year. And also continuing to build our app and continue to, and by building community and keeping people like loving the experience that has helped us stay really true to the mission of the hit burn company itself. And mm. we, one of the big things about community building specifically is we survey our audience all the time. We are asking for feedback all the time. uh, in, in emails, we'll send out surveys all the time. I will ask in the Facebook groups, I'll post polls, I'll post uh, surveys in there as well. I'll just say, Hey, like, what was your favorite part about this? Why? And I get a gazillion different answers. And this is also great for content creation too. If you're trying to think about content, ask your people and take verbatim their questions, because if they have it, a thousand other people have it too. So that's one thing about, uh, hip burn is being able to just stay really connected with our community by asking them what they want and need. And then we implement as much as humanly possible hmm. that makes sense financially and also makes sense to continue the vision because people will ask for certain things. And they're like, yeah, this doesn't really align with what we want to do. Um, and yeah, so there's that. And then also just like out, out, outside opportunities, it's really, it's really easy to get distracted because there are so many different, you could set up your business, so many different things that you could be doing. But with Hipburn, we've really identified that. And then I've been asked by a few different companies to create programs for them. And for a while, I was like, well, I have my own app. I have my own fitness company. Like, will that take away from it? Is that a competition? And it ultimately came to, no, it's not. And I used the example of the music industry. So think about like, Anna, we, you know, she was just doing this verbal. She's amazing, right? We love Rihanna's songs and we also love when she collaborates with other artists, right? So you're, you love seeing two of your favorite bands or musicians do songs together. So collaborating and creating stuff with other people in the industry is a great way to continue to build credibility and also get in front of audiences that you probably wouldn't have been in front of otherwise. And so I, I created a program with it formerly known as open fit it now got absorbed by beach body but it created a program with shay mitchell uh who's who's an actress and that was a really amazing way to get in front of a gigantic audience that has brought a lot of people into the hit burn world that we wouldn't have been able to find otherwise so 
that, and then just smaller form collaboration. I collaborate with so many other trainers and creators all the time. We, we just did an event in Seattle with Don Saladino and Luca Hosevar. And it's just a, it's a cool way to make friends. Some of these mm. people are like really good friends of mine now, but also sharpen your skills and also get in front of new audiences. So glad you're saying that, you know, there's, there's a hesitancy when you're new and you're asking people to collaborate, they feel like you're just trying to get something from them. Yeah. You know, how do you navigate, uh, you know, building genuine relationships, you know, what's been your, you know, approach to doing that in a way that's genuine and feels good for you. First of all, it comes down to, you have to actually be genuine in your intentions <laughs> that that's really huge because I I've done a lot of different collaborations, just like very casual things for like social media with different creators. And you can tell really quickly when someone wants something from you and when they genuinely want to create a super cool and, and are just interested in you as a person, if they're only interested in your numbers and what they can get from you, you can tell pretty quickly. So first of all, just have good intentions. Uh, and if you, if you reach out to people, like I reach out to people and they don't respond and that's fine. Not they don't leave, they don't respond back to Kelsey. Yeah, man. People <laughs> not every enough time, and it's fine, you know. But okay. but that's that's all right, and and that might happen to any of you too, and and that's okay. We're not going to be able to connect with every single person that we want to reach out to, but mm. just keep getting after it, and uh, that's that's been a huge piece of what I love to do. I love connecting with other people. What, what, what is a good collab? You know, I haven't asked anybody this question uh, on vision day yet, but what does a, an approach look like for a collaboration? You know, I kind of got my approach. I, I've always said the key is to align yeah. on common ground and find mm -hmm. something that they're, you're both passionate about where if there's two circles, you're trying to figure out like you got all your stuff in your circle. I got all mine in mine. And then you got to find that overlap. Um, right. how, what's your approach to, you know, you know, looking at who you want to team up with and who would be cool to create content with. Is it a, is it formulaic or is it just more like, what would you say? Yeah, it's, it will depend on what it is, because if, if it's something more formal, that it's a product that we're selling, there's a lot of due diligence there. Either they have to be, I have to have a really close friendship with them, or I have to know them very well as a colleague. Um, because I've, I've had things go not well with that. And so making sure that you, uh, yeah, you, you choose people wisely hmm. because if you, if you do like business partnerships or, or just even programs and collaboration, it, it can change relationships. And you just want to make sure that everyone has positive intentions, that everything is super clear on how things are going to work. Um, so, so there's a lot more due diligence if there is some, if there's money involved. In, in sales involved. If it's just uh, creating a piece of content, I like I, that's a way that I love meeting new people is just creating casual like workouts and things like that. And there's there's been some where I'm like, oh, that would probably be the last time that we, <laughs> you know, that we create something, and that's okay too. It you, you win some, you lose some, but but I've met some of my very best friends that way. I just will reach out to people on Instagram and be like, hey, hey like super cool. I'm I'm visiting in town. Or, uh, you know, we live in the same area, would love to, to connect. And uh, if it's, you know, someone where it's like, oh, let's get in a workout, grab some coffee after it's, it's very casual in that sense. So it just depends on the kind of content. That's really great. Yeah. I think everyone needs to hear, like, there's not, there, there isn't really a formula per se. It is, it is, it's gotta be organic. It's gotta be natural. I think every collaboration I've ever done has been, uh, there's been a curiosity on my side. I'd love to learn from this individual. I've been following them. And they're well respected. Uh, they've got, I would call it the uh, time test. They've stood the test of time for at least four years. <laughs> and um, and then, yeah, there's probably something that uh, they have a expertise in that can fill a gap that people have been asking for. So that there is there's a natural, hey guys, you've been asking for this. I've gone out to find so that you guys can uh, get this need fulfilled. So I appreciate you sharing all that. Um, yeah, I'll give an example of that, like just something that we did really recently. So in my Facebook groups, I had, a, I have a lot of women uh, in their forties and fifties and a million of them were asking about uh, nutrition for menopause and, mm. and perimenopause and all of these different things. And 
uh, I have a, a girlfriend who's one of my best friends, who's a registered dietitian who specializes in hormones. So I'm like, perfect. Let's have Julia come in. We're going to do a, a zoom call just like you and I are doing right now. And I had them submit a bunch of questions ahead of time. And then afterwards, uh, we did some live Q and A and it was great. And they, they got so much incredible information from it. And there wasn't any exchange of money between Julia and I, it was just providing a service for people based on what they were asking. So that's, uh, that was an, another example. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. People have questions around things that, uh, you know, I think that's great to like default expertise to other people. I do that all the time. And, yeah. uh, and you know what? It typically comes back. They'll say, hey, do you mind coming to speak to my audience on what you do? Because you're really good at that. And it just comes back to that, you know, you know, value exchange. Uh, so um, I've got a couple more rapid fire questions if you'd be up for it, Kelsey. I'm up for it. All right. So so how do you, I'm going to use an extreme word. How do you destroy a community? <laughs> how do what you should I not do? To, <laughs> how have you seen communities, you know, you know, evaporate, if you will. If you, well, again, on the extreme example, if you lie to them, if you are just trying to get their money, the quick cash grabs are. Frustrating for knowing what you want to be about and sticking to that is really important. If you're changing your, your approach to nutrition and workouts, if you're a fitness professional, hmm. those are examples. Um, if you're, if you're changing your methodology every five seconds, just because keto's hot or being vegan's a hot or whatever it is, if you're changing that often, people are going to find that out pretty quickly and they won't be able to trust you. So that's a really quick way <laughs> to kill an audience. Um, and, and just not showing up if, if you aren't showing up to, to really care for them and provide the services that you said you'd provide, that's that people are going to notice. Let me piggyback on the, you know, not selling. So people come in, they pay you money, money, they're getting a service. I think we all agree. We could certainly sell them additional things. They could use this. They could use that. How do you find the sweet spot to knowing that you're not overkilling and that you're not overselling despite being able to make a case for, well, this is extra, or this would really help you. How have you figured, how, how have you managed that? Cause you and I, you know, Dennis, he's seen a lot of people, the affiliate model, like you scratch my back, I'll scratch yeah. your back. It's a model. I mean, you can make a lot of money promoting other people's stuff. And some people that's their only model for revenue. It's affiliate marketing. It's, I wouldn't say it's wrong, but if you're trying to, if, if you're trying to build a brand and a community, you know, there was a point where I just ceased all affiliate marketing. I think it was probably 2015 or 16. I just, I, I, it's how I made me a lot of my money through affiliate marketing relationships. And then I started seeing it was kind of the guys who are only doing that were really starting to struggle. And I'm like, you know what? I'm focused on promoting Vince Del Monte and all my stuff. How have you navigated the balance of promoting your stuff versus other people's stuff and, uh, you know, doing it in a way that feels good for you? Yeah. So majority of what we promote is our own stuff. And it depends on, you know, where people are coming in and how they're, if they're coming through a funnel or, they find us on social media. Um, we, we email out every day, which sounds like a lot, but we provide a lot of value. And that's one of the ways that has really made our thrive. Um, Dennis is, he's the lead on that. And he emails every single day, but we provide value in every single email. So whether that be a workout or a, some sort of tip, encouragement, a recipe, uh, sending to a free workout on YouTube, like there's value in every single email. And also an opportunity for people to purchase because that opportunity will change their life if they say yes to it. The, we believe so deeply in our programs that they are incredible and will change people's lives that we give them an opportunity. And it's not always like a hard sell. Sometimes it's just in the PS, right? So uh, we, we give opportunities every single day, but we, we also have a, a cadence. We have 10 days before our challenges, we start promoting a little, we start, we open our challenge registration. So we're promoting a lot more during those days. And they know that the months in between, they, they know what to expect. Now they're mm -hmm. used to this flow because we're not just pumping random stuff at them all the time. They, they know the general flow. And then as far as partnerships, 
different like brand deals and affiliate things that we do, but it's only things that we believe in that will help support their journey. So if it's a, you know, a protein or a supplement or, um, you know, any of those types of things, we, we have a few partners that we go in deep with and we're not just switching every other day based on, you know, who hang most. We, we try to go deep with a few partners. That's really cool. Um, advice to female entrepreneurs. I love just uh, hearing, you know, maybe what's the conversation that I don't know about that's going on that they need to hear you speak to. What is the challenge that, you know, I wouldn't be as qualified to speak to? So, an ex yeah, well, thank you for uh, <laughs> allowing, you know, uh, our voices to be heard in this, in this industry, because I, I'll give an example of that I gave um, at this event that I just put on with Dennis and Don Saladino and Luca Hosfar. So uh, we put on this event together and I was time that I was at, I was at another event and I was on a panel and it was all these fitness professionals in a room and all of the panelists were lined up in the front and it's just dude after dude, after dude, after dude, after dude. And then me at the end. <laughs> okay. Hmm. So, so it's just me. And then all these guys, and I am a very, like, I'm, I'm much more quiet by nature. I'm a more shy person by nature. So I'm not like running into the room to, to be heard. So when I'm in these situations, I know I'm already needing to level up the volume on my personality. I'm always myself. I just need to turn up the volume in certain situations. And specifically in this type of situation, I'm on, I'm on the panel for a reason. You are all in the room for a reason. You are on, you know, in a leader for a reason. So for me, I was like, okay, I need, I know the value that I have to this conversation. And in this specific answer, one of the things that I do is another like kind of improv move. If you've uh, heard of yes. And when you're doing improv, you continue what the conversation of what people are saying by like, yes. And then this happened and you just keep it going and you you're supportive of the experience. It's not necessarily that you always agree with everything, but you're like, yes. And here's the value that I can add. And so I was like, in my brain, I was like, okay, come on. Yes. And, and so I interjected because otherwise I would have never gotten a word in if I didn't purposely level myself up and know that I have value to add in this room. And I think you need to go into situations and survey it and say, okay, I belong here. Here's the value that I can add. And then just yes. And everybody and get your word in. It's really important <laughs> to, to make sure that you're doing that. I'm stealing that. Yes. And yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a great tip. I really like that a lot. All right. Um, what do you do on a bad day? I say, you know, you know, as a business coach, you know, I hear this, you know, you know, in our community and in, you know, private groups and private messages. Hey, Vince, we're having a really bad day of sales. It's been a really bad week. It's been a bad month. Vince, I'm getting worried now. Um, I don't know anybody who's not had a bad day, bad week. I've known people who've had bad years. How do you manage that, you know, mindset? What do you do differently? Like how have you trained yourself or just maybe speak to those, those places where emotionally you start to become dysregulated. So if you're in the fitness industry pattern where fourth quarter people are celebrating the holidays and they don't really care about fitness as much. So we we've noticed a pattern in, in our own businesses where people just aren't as invested in buying nutrition programs or workout programs when they're nearing the holidays because they're spending their time doing other things. So it's not necessarily something that we're doing wrong. It's just seasonal. So understanding that there are maybe that way in your business, maybe it's not, but being aware that there could be seasonal differences is super important. So with, with that, we've, we've noticed that as something where it's fourth quarter, it's not, <laughs> nothing is going wrong. It's just, it's just the, the time of year. And also just like I was saying before, always being curious, the, the internet space is constantly changing. We need time and pay with learning new skills and trying new things. So we, we have become very aware that pivoting, like staying true to your overall mission, but you need to pivot quickly in how you generate leads in different ways and being able to be okay that things might shift a little bit in how you're doing things 
and, but that's fine. But you have to be willing to put yourself out there and try different things. Not everything that you throw out there is going to stick as far as a funnel, as far as a strategy, but you have to try new things as the world changes. And so that's something that we've also really been aware of. Okay. If it's, if it's a slower, you know, season or whatever it is, what can we be doing to continually to keep improving? So pivoting quickly and trying new things is also a, a big piece. What kind of advice do you give your clients when they're experiencing the same thing? Is it the same? Hey, I haven't lost any weight yet. Or, Hey, uh, this is, this diet's not working, or I think I need to ch change something up here. Uh, hey, can I have this instead of that? W what, what does that voice sound like when you need to get your clients, um, in line, back on track, if you will, you know, we hear this all the time. My, my clients aren't compliant. They're not doing what I tell them. What's, what do you, what do you suspect is the issue when you hear that? So one of the other mantras that we have in our community is you got to give yourself grace. And because often, yes, there certainly are compliance issues when it comes <laughs> to the fitness space, but if, but people are their own worst enemies. And like you were saying before, sometimes we get in our own way because we are trying to be too perfect. And if we eat one cookie or something, miss one day of working out, okay, it's all over. Now I failed. I'm off the wagon. I don't even use the term on the wagon, off the wagon, because this is our life. And we are like, fitness is a part of our lives. There, there's going to be seasons where we dial it up, we dial it back, but we're still moving forward no matter what. So being able to communicate that through constantly encouraging people that, Hey, it's not over. You didn't fail. We're just getting things rolling mm. is, is a big piece of what we do. Um, and then having open, honest conversation, uh, I, whether it be in my small group community and we do a call. I ask them very candidly to you know, if they're willing to share, like, tell me, tell me about this. Tell me what you're struggling with. Do we think that it's, it's the workouts? Do we think it's the nutrition? Like, and we just dive a little bit deeper. Um, I think, yes, people it's so, it's so tough because yes, there is compliance issues, but also I think we have to empathy. We can just keep people in our world for the long term and change little things over time and view it less as you have to be perfect right now. I would so much rather have someone be with me for three years, working out three days a week, than have them work out seven days a week for 30 days and then jump shit because they're mm. burned out. So for me, it's about teaching the long-term strategies. That's fantastic. That's a great, great formula for a long-term community, right? That, that yeah. long view perspective of fitness. I love what you said earlier too they are not just what they do. Um, maybe we can wrap up with vision in your own life. Um, your, the business, what, what's your vision for the business? Where do you want to see hit burn? What are you guys working towards? I want to keep growing, keep serving our people. We are continually trying to improve the things that we do. And for example, we, we our challenge in January. We created with a, an actress, uh, who I train and it was really, it was a much bigger production than we typically do. It was much more expensive, all the lights, the makeup, the hair, all of that stuff. And we created a, a program for January to see if people would love it because they, they said that they were wanting something like that and it went well and it was great. But also a lot of people still did our traditional white background videos where it's just me on a loop. And then my talking head comes up and it's a fraction of the cost to produce. So so for us, it's continually listening to our people to, to try new things, see if that's a direction that we want to go, but then always coming back to that ultimate vision that we have where we're providing great things, but it needs to make sense long-term. So all that to say, we are going to continue to find new ways to serve our people, to continue to grow. And um, that's, that's basically it. We just want to love our lives, have it be full in the business that we do, but also continue to explore all of the other interests that we have. And Kelsey, I, I'm, I'm so guessing more than just what we do for work. That's amazing. I'm guessing Kelsey, that example, that, that, um, that standard you're embodying is uh, building the community. I, I wouldn't be surprised because people want to be a part of a community where people are built, being built, not just one dimensionally in their fitness lives, but Hey, they're living something that 
you know, I could transfer to my whole life and pass on. So uh, I think embodying what you're preaching is, I'm going to guess one of the key ingredients too. So congrats and thank you for, for uh, setting that standard for us. Absolutely. It's, it's really amazing because we've been doing this for a long time and seeing our community become best friends with each other is really cool. There's an example. Uh, we have a, a group of women in our community who call themselves the Golden Gate Gals because they all met in our Hitburn community and they decided that they wanted to run a half marathon together at the Golden Gate Bridge. So they did that in September together and Dennis and I flew out there. Uh, we did not run, but all of these women ran and then we got to have lunch with them and hang out and they've become best friends. They have like wine Wednesdays together where they just get on zoom. They live all over the country and some in Canada and they just have become the best of friends. Two of them just went to Vegas together to a Taylor Swift concert. It's amazing what happens when you, yes, it's the fitness. Yes. It's the nutrition, but these are real every single day. And if we can find ways to just give them opportunity to connect with each other and become friends and show the real side of who we are, they will be with you for life. And that is true transformation. It's so much more than weight on the scale or body fat percentage. It's amazing, Kelsey. Where can people learn more about your work and follow what you're doing? Yeah. So my per Instagram is the daily Kelsey. And I talk a lot about relationship with food and body there and just show my life. My business Instagram is Hitburn, So it's hit with two eyes, H I I T B U R N. And, um, you can find all of our stuff on our Hitburn website as well. Yes. You guys have an amazing social media. You guys are showing up like no other. You guys got great, great content. I hope you guys have a fun time at, was it WonderCon you said? Yeah, so we uh, got back last night. It was it was a great time. It's just it's cool just seeing people be able to have fun and be themselves and, and feel safe to dress wild and do whatever they want. It's it's a really cool thing uh, to be a part of. So we had fun. <laughs> That's great theme. Well, hey, I'm excited to see you guys in a couple of weeks. So uh, thank you for today. And uh, guys, if you got some value from this, I'm sure you did. Please share this on your social media. And uh, tag myself at Vince Del Monte, tag Kelsey at the Daily Kelsey, and maybe we'll reshare it, hashtag Vision Day. And this has been an awesome, awesome way to wrap up Vision Day 4. So uh, Kelsey, thank you so much. I'm going to um, end record, hit record, uh, end the recording and then just wrap up with a couple uh, announcements here and we'll be all done for today. Thank you.